Now let's focus first on the surface epithelium. As I said before, the surface epithelium is characterized by long sheets of cells. And these long sheets of cells will be covering or lining surfaces. That's why the name of the epithelium is surface epithelium. Now, this surface epithelium is classified according to the shape of the cells we have and also according to the number of layers of cells we have. When we are looking at the surface epithelium and we see that the cells are flat, and they look like fried eggs. When you look fried eggs to the side, you know that they are flat and then there is a little bump in the middle, which is the nucleus. This shape is called squamous. And squamous makes a reference to the scales of a fish because the scales are flat and squamous cells are also flat. So an epithelium that is composed of cells that have the flat shape is named squamous epithelium. Now, if we look at the tissue and we see that the cells have a cube shape, guess how this tissue is named? This tissue is named cuboidal epithelium because these cells have a cube shape. So, this is named cuboidal. Now, if we have very tall cells and these cells are very tall, and they look like columns. How do you think this shape of cells were named? They are named columnar cells. So, columnar cells make up what we call the columnar epithelium. Now, according to the number of layers, if we have a single layer of cells that is named simple, and if we have several layers of cells, and these cells are basically on top of each other, so several layers. This is called stratified because strata means layers. So, if you have stratification, that is several layers. So, the name of the epithelium that has several layers of cells is stratified. Now, as you can expect, the name of the surface epithelium will have to state the shape of the cells, as well as the number of layers of cells. So, we can have several squamous cells right next to each other, and all these cells are touching the basement membrane that separates the epithelium tissue from the underlying connective tissue. And when we have this single layer of squamous cells, we call this epithelium simple, squamous, making a reference that these cells are flat, epithelium. Now, if we have a single layer of cuboidal cells and the basal surface of these cuboidal cells, of this single layer, are all touching the basement membrane, obviously, because we have just one single layer of cells, this epithelium is named simple, making a reference that there is one single layer. The cells are cuboidal, so simple cuboidal epithelium. Then, if we have a single layer of tall cells, how would this epithelium be named? This will be named simple columnar epithelium. Now, when we have several layers of cells, we call it stratified, right? So, in this example, we have several layers of cells. And if we put the basement membrane, you can see that only this bottom layer of cells is touching the basement membrane. But the other layers of cells are far away from the basement membrane. And that's the reason why we say that in any simple epithelium, each individual cell is in contact with the basement membrane. Because when we look at the stratified version, when we have several layers of cells, the only cells that are touching the basement membrane are the cells that are at the bottom, at the base of the tissue. All the other layers that are on top, they are not touching the basement membrane. Now, what gives us the name of the stratified epithelium is specifically the shape of the cells that are on the top layer of 
this stratified epithelium. So if the top layer of this stratified epithelium is composed of flat cells, this epithelium will be named stratified squamous epithelium. If the top layer of this stratified epithelium has a cuboidal shape, this epithelium is named stratified cuboidal epithelium. And if the top layer of this stratified epithelium is composed of tall columnar cells, this epithelium is named stratified columnar epithelium. Now look at this. We have another surface epithelium that we see the basement membrane, and then we have the basal layer of cells, and then we have another layer of cells on top. And when we look at these cells, they are rounded. And in a different instance, when we look at this same tissue, we see several layers of cells like we did before, but these cells are not as rounded. They are like stretched, but it's the same epithelium. And this epithelium has the ability of being relaxed or is stretched. And this epithelium transitions from one state to the other. And that is the reason why this epithelium was named transitional epithelium. Now, in some cases, what we see is the basement membrane and resting on top of the basement membrane, we see cells that are at different heights. And you see tall cells and not as tall. And when you look at this tissue, you see the nucleus of these cells at different heights. And it gives you the impression that you have several layers of cells, but in reality, all these cells are touching the basement membrane which tells us that we have a single layer of cells. So since when we look at this tissue and we see these cells at different heights and the nucleus at different levels, it seems like we have several layers of cells. And that's a false information. This type of epithelium receives the name of pseudo, making a reference to false, because the pseudo root means false. So the name of this tissue is pseudo, is stratified, so it's a false is stratified because it's a single layer of cells, columnar epithelium. Now that you have the knowledge of how we name the different surface epithelium, I would like to add one more detail. When we look at the surface epithelium that has a single layer of columnar cells, and remember the possibilities of single layer of columnar cells are simple columnar epithelium and also the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium. Even though the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium looks like several layers of cells, it's just one single layer, right? So when we look at the apical surface of these columnar cells, what happens is that we find sometimes cilia. Now, do you remember what the apical surface is? The apical surface is the surface of the cell that is not in contact with the basement membrane. The basal surface is the surface that's in contact with the basement membrane. And on the opposite side, we find the apical surface. So, since sometimes we find cilia on the apical surface of the columnar cells, when we are naming this specific epithelium, we must state if it is ciliated, it contains cilia, or if it is non-ciliated, it does not contain cilia. So at the end, what do we have? We have either simple ciliated columnar epithelium. We also can have simple non-ciliated columnar epithelium. And we can have pseudostratified ciliated or non-ciliated columnar epithelium. Now, do you happen to remember the difference between cilia and microvilli? 
The differences I would like you to remember are that cilia are much longer than microvilli. And very, very important, cilia are capable of giving a directionality to what is passing by. So, for example, if we have a dust particle right here, and all these cilia are moving in this direction, this dust particle is moving in that specific direction. Microvilli doesn't have this capability. Microvilli are there to increase the surface area of the cell that has them. So, microvilli increase the surface area, and consequently, the cell has a higher absorption rate. Because if you increase the surface area, you have more area to absorb 